CMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help. Good evening. I'm calling to order this meeting of the Arlington Select Board on November 4th, 2024. I'm Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Tonight's meeting is being conducted in a hybrid format consistent with provisions in state law for remote participation in public meetings. Before we begin, please note the following. The meeting is being conducted in the Select Board Chambers and over Zoom. It is being recorded and simultaneously broadcasted on ACMI. People wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. People participating either in person or by Zoom are reminded that you may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, we ask you to provide your full name and place of residence in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials found on the town's website, specifically the select board agendas and minutes page. If technical difficulties sever the remote connection to one or more participants, and efforts to reconnect within a reasonable period of time fail, the in-person meeting will continue at the discretion of the chair, provided that a quorum of the board is physically present. Zoom participants are encouraged to retain the phone number provided in their confirmation email for a backup audio connection to the meeting. Tonight, there will be two opportunities for public comment, the open forum period, and we also will be having a tree removal hearing that is item 11. If you're attending by Zoom and want to participate when we reach those items, please raise your hand when I announce that public comment is open. We have 18 items on the agenda this evening. Let's see how much of the town's business we can get done. And before I turn to the consent agenda, I meant to do this at the beginning, we could just turn to the other members and staff who are here, just uh, introduce yourselves, uh, who's here this evening. John Hurd. Eric Helmuth. Diane Mahan. Leonard Diggins. James Feeney. Michael Cunningham. Ashley Marr. Thank you. Uh, and with that, I will move to the consent agenda. I, item two is holiday stroll in Arlington Heights on December 14th, 2024. Item three is a special request for a special one day beer and wine license on November 7th, 2024 at the Arlington Community Center. Uh, item four is a request for a special one day beer and wine license on November 7th, 2024 23 Maple Street for Save Mass Wildlife Fundraiser. Item five is a request for a contractor drain layer license, D&D &D Excavating, and Osorio Brothers Landscaping and Construction Corps. Um, if I could ask the board for any questions, motions? Move approval. I'll second, Mr. Chair, but I do have a question. Yeah, certainly. And it concerns the, um, the holiday stroll. I mean, I see that they um, said that they were going to get in touch with Officer Rateau. I mean, regarding I mean, uh, a detail, I'm just not seeing any response from Officer Rateau. I mean, I'm assuming that it's okay, that he's aware of it and it's okay, but normally we get some kind of sign off from him. Um, Mr. Feeney, Ms. Meyer, are you aware of any? We could make that at the condition of the vote that there, yeah. there is contact. Yeah. Just to make sure he's aware. Yeah, you because know, it's cut off. I mean, um, or, or it's a little. The the PDF is a little truncated, but I don't see any response from him. So uh, just just to make sure that he's aware of it. That's all. You know, because okay. of course I'm okay. fine with it. Yeah. You know? Okay. Thank. And and I do have two other items on the consent agenda, and again, just for purposes of of making the required the required finding for the one day beer and wine license. Um, we have issued one day beer and wine licenses for the Arlington Community Center and for events at 23 Maple Street before. Both locations are within 500 feet of a church. And so um, because we have done this before in talking to Attorney Cunningham, he would like us to include that it will not interfere with the educational spiritual activities. Given the prior practice, I think we're comfortable doing that. So Mr. Hurd, if that's all right, if that gets included as part of the motion. Yes. So amended. Mr. Diggins, you're comfortable with that? Okay. So on a motion for approval of the consent agenda by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Item six is an appointment to the Zoning Board of Appeals, Adam LeBlanc, for a term to expire October 31, 2027. 
Is Dave LeBlanc joining us uh, through Zoom? Or? Is he? He's not here in the chambers, is he? Yeah, I don't see him on Zoom. Okay. <coughs> we'll say um, he was a, he's an associate member mm. of the Zoning Board of Appeals, and on March 6th, 2023, we appointed him um, to the ZBA as an associate member. I believe Mr. Diggins and Mr. Helmuth interviewed him prior to the appointment, and at that time, Mr. Diggins said, let's see how long it takes for you to uh, become a full member. So since he has been here before and we have appointed him, if members are comfortable, I'll take a motion. Move approval. Okay. Mr. Diggins? Second. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Okay. So on a motion for approval uh, by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Item seven, appointment to the Open Space Committee. Emily Myron for a term to expire June 30th, 2027. She's here. Okay, yeah, no, come on up. Thank you for coming this evening. If yeah, thank you could you. just uh, introduce yourself and uh, let us know a little bit about your interest in being on the Open Space Committee. Yeah, absolutely. Hi, it's nice to meet everyone. I'm Emily Myron. I live on Barnum Street in East Arlington. Um, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I'm getting over something that my toddler brought home. Um, I've been in Arlington for the last three years or so, um, moved here kind of in the middle of the pandemic and then had a baby. And so things have been a little crazy, but um, sort of coming out of that period now and really want to get involved in the town. I work for an environmental organization and have been working in open space conservation for the last 10 years. Uh, I also regularly use our parks and open spaces. I literally every single day go to Magnolia Field with my son. So this is a resource that I feel really personally invested in, helping to make sure that these are really safe, welcoming spaces that we can take advantage of here in town is one of the reasons I love living in Arlington are the open spaces. And so just really looking to get more involved and do what I can to help out and continue to make these you know, special places in the town to help build community. Great. So. Thank you very much. I'll turn it to board members for any questions or motions. Mr. Helmuth. Uh, thank you very much. I can't imagine a, a better background and motivation for serving. <laughs> thank, you. Um, thank you for being willing to do so, and I uh, very happily move approval. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Second. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Any other questions, comments? Okay. Yeah. Again, thank you for your willingness to serve. So, on a, thank you. A motion for approval by uh, Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor say aye. 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 Thank you very much. Looking forward to it. Great. Nice to see you. Thank you. Item eight, under licenses and permits for approval, a wine and malt alcohol license for the Vintage Tea and Cake Company at 677 Mass Ave. Is the applicant here this evening? Yes. Yes, I am. Hello, everybody. Hi. Yeah, yeah. I th think we saw you recently. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if you can just, I, I know you had talked about uh, coming back for, for a separate license, so um, maybe just update us and, and um, give us a little bit more information on the request here. Yes, of course. So um, we would love to serve um, sparkling wine with our afternoon tea, um, which is a, quite a common thing to do in um, tea rooms, especially across um, like England and Ireland. And then in addition to that, we would love to also serve um, a small you know, selection of wine and beer um, in the evenings as a wine bar. Great. Um, thank you. Do we have any questions or motions from board from the board members? Mrs. Mahan. I would like to move approval and I'm looking forward to it. Thank, thank you. you. Second. Okay, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Anything else? Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, thank you. I'd love to hear how the business is going so far. I know you're, you just recently launched, but um, what's been the, re yeah, the response? Yeah, it, it's been wonderful. Um, um, we've been uh, busy, and this coming weekend we're full, so it's been great. Excellent. Well, I, welcome from Arlington. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't managed to get there my, uh, myself, but I can't wait myself. Once, if I can get a reservation, which apparently is not a given, so that's that's great news. <laughs> well, that's we do a really nice holiday tea, so that that makes it extra special for sure. <laughs> you can make it in December. I'm glad it's going well. We're glad you're here. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Yeah, and um, so on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mrs. Mahan for approval of the application. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Best of luck. Sounds like you're after a great start. So. Thank you, everybody. Hope to see you in person someday. <laughs> Absolutely. All right. 
We are now to open forum. Except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor a decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to, to present a concern or request. Is there anybody in the chambers who wishes to be heard for open forum? See any hands? Oh, okay, yep. Well, if, if, if you're here to speak on item 11, which is the tree removal, we'll have public participation at that time. So anything other than that? Okay, I don't see any hands. Uh, is there anybody on Zoom? Seeing no hands raised, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Ms. Meyer. Uh, that concludes open forum for this evening. Uh, moving right along, under traffic rules and orders and other business, we have quite a few items under this category. Item nine is a vote for a date for the 2025 annual town election. Um, and for that, I'll turn to Attorney Cunningham. He had sent us a memorandum on the potential date. Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, yes, there's a, a memo that's included in the materials that's available to the public regarding the setting of the date for annual town meeting as well as their annual town election in the spring. I know we're just getting, uh, we got an election tomorrow, but this is our spring annual town election and uh, pursuant to the bylaws, that date is normally the first Saturday in April, which in 2025 would fall on April 5. Uh, the, the, the board has discretion if that date were to fall on some Saturday that were inconvenient for whatever reason or, or conflicted with holidays potentially. Uh, in this instance, I'm not aware of any holidays in 2025 that would conflict with April 5th. With regards to town meeting, uh, it's typically set by bylaw on the fourth Monday in April. We were set, we did amend the bylaws last year. The town meeting took that action to allow the select board similar flexibility if we ran into a conflict, which we did last year. Um, there is no conflict that I'm aware of this year. So the fourth Monday in April would be April 28th, 2025, if the board is inclined to uh, vote that date. Uh, in preparation for town meeting, of course, the warrant uh, needs to be opened by the select board. That is typically done the first week of December. In the draft motion, the, the memorandum that I prepared for the board, I suggested the date of December 5th. That's a Thursday. The reason for that is that it was just, I think the board has a meeting on Wednesday of that week, and I thought it might be helpful for the select board staff to not have to deal with both the opening of the warrant and preparation for a select board meeting. Uh, and then I thought also just for the public, uh, putting it on a Friday would not be uh, necessarily the best considering the town hall typically closes early on Fridays. So that would, Thursday's the long day, that would give the public some opportunity on the first day to come in even later when the town hall is open until seven o'clock on Thursdays. It closes the last February in April pursuant to the bylaw. This year that falls as late as it possibly could, which is January 31st, that's a Friday. So there's a draft motion in, in the memorandum. I'd be happy to answer any questions the board might have. Great, thank, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. And I'd announced item nine, we, we might as well take item 10 as well. The memorandum um, that Attorney Cunningham prepared is within item, agenda item 10, it covers both. And that's to, for approval, the opening of the warrant uh, for the annual town meeting as Attorney Cunningham um, just stated. So I will turn to board members, Mrs. Mahan. Um. Two quick questions before I make a motion. Um, we have to have two separate motions for election day and then um, opening the warrant, correct? Correct, Mrs. Mon. And then is my memory correct that um, in the bylaw it says for the town election it's the first Saturday in April unless by February the board takes action? February 1st, yes, Mrs. Mon. Is that also the same regarding setting the date for town meeting? Yes, it is. So if we had the conflict that we had last year um we just need to keep that in mind everything has to be done so first i'll do if it's okay with you mr chairman sure. make a motion to set the date for the 2025 annual town election for saturday april 5th 2025. thank you do i have a second mr diggins second mr chair Great. Thank a quick you. question if i may to um, attorney kernaham or anyone who may know the answer to this Oh, sure. right ahead. I'm sorry. Thank you. Um, so, can people pull? Pa I'm not up this term, you know, this year. But can people pull papers? You know, um, or when can people pull papers? Um, Mr. Chair, I'm not. I'm not sure, Mr. Diggins. I would check with the clerk on that. I don't think it's. I don't think they can pull them yet. 
but I will I check on the exact date. Right, maybe, but could they pull them on the day that we open the warrant, or, well, you don't know. I so don't that's know. We'll just that's a it. town clerk. I okay. think I know yeah. the answer for her, but okay. I don't want to speak okay, for sure. her. Yeah, and, and we can report back on that at our next meeting after we confer with the town sure. clerk. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Okay. okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Any other questions, comments? Okay, so on a motion by Mrs. Mahan for, to set the date of the annual town election for April 5th, 2025, motion seconded by Mr. Diggins. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay, and now item 10, um, we heard from Attorney Cunningham. There is a proposed motion in his memorandum to us. I'll turn to board members. Mrs. Mahan. Um, again, I'd like to make a motion on this and I just wanna teeny little bit of town history that the warrant went from being open for less than a week to two weeks and then the then town moderator, John Warden, did a warrant article for uh, three weeks. Um, and in the interest of everybody, the board on its own, which I was on the board then and made the motion, it's open for, you know, close to two months, about seven weeks. So, um, and again, you know, we encourage people who uh, write warrant articles. Of course, the select board's office is available, but town council and our deputy town council regarding uh, questions on form and there's nothing worse that someone has a great idea gets to town meeting floor and forgets to put in four words or something five words that need to be there so what I'd like to do is move that um, the <coughs> warrant for the annual town meeting which will start on April 28th 2025 that the warrant is opened on December 5th 2024 at 8 a.m and close on January 31st, 2025 at 12 p.m. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Diggins? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'll second it. And may I ask a question to Mrs. Mahan? S certainly. So, uh, thanks for the history. You know, is, is there a correlation, you think, between the amount of time the warrant, the, the, it's open, uh, and the number of articles on the warrant? No, not at all. Okay. And, and, and one of the things was, um, there's always the same three people, and the names sometimes change, but there's always the same three that we could probably give them three months or four months and still either come in last minute or it doesn't go through town council, which is not a requirement, and that kind of doesn't work out well in most cases. But um, <clears throat> I'd say 98% of the people take advantage of the process and get everything in and get it when they're ready. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I just want to note that I've also already had residents reach out regarding warrant articles, and that is appreciated, as Mrs. Mahan said, to make sure that things are done in the proper form and just with consideration of perhaps conflicting laws or any other issues that might arise. And really appreciate people reaching out early with their ideas. Thank, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Um, okay, so on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Diggins, I'll repeat it again here, that the warrant for the 2025 annual town meeting to commence business on April 28, 2025 will be opened on December 5th, 2024, and will close on January 1, January 31, 2025 at 12 p.m. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, thank you. Item 11, uh, for approval, Crab apple tree removal at 149 Pleasant Street. James Mackey, is Mr. Mackey here? He'll be appearing on Zoom. Zoom. Okay. Mr. Mackey? Yes, I'm here, sorry. Good evening, Mr. Mackey. If you could just introduce yourself and um, if you could just go through the request. I see plans on the, um, on the screen here, but um, I know we're talking about a crab apple tree at 149 Pleasant, and you could give us a little bit more information on, on the request here. Yeah, so we went through the process through historical to um, get an approved building that met the uh, criteria for his historical. Took about a year. And the driveway that's coming out, there's a small four inch crab apple tree that's between this curb and the sidewalk. And um, I had an arborist and would like to take it down and replace it with 
two new crab apple trees of the same size, one on each side of the driveway. Okay, thank you. And, and the reason why we're here is the tree warden was consultant. There was an objection to the tree being removed and under uh, General Laws Chapter 87, I believe, um, that requires the request to come before the select board. Um, that is correct. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Um, all right. I will start with, if there's questions before we have any uh, motions from board members if you're looking for more information, then I will open it up to the public for comment, and then we will um, take action one way or the other. Um, so I'll turn to board members if there are any questions. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I would like to ask a question of the applicant. Um, I know that some of this was, was covered in our written materials, but just for the benefit of the public, um, and also to make sure that I understand, can you outline uh, why it's necessary to remove the tree um, and, you know, and that why an alternative to build around it is not, is not feasible? Yeah, so the tree is in the middle of the proposed driveway, and that would allow a straight shot out to um, Route 60. And, you know, um, it's a small tree. It's not a shade tree. And if we have to go around it, it would... The cars would have to go around the tree and it would getting onto Route 60 would be, you know, a safety concern perhaps. Trying to back out or pull in. So where it's not a shade tree, I think it's, you know, it, it makes sense to remove it and replace it with two new trees. Okay. And where are you with, with the permitting process? Are you in, engaged with any, uh, is, is it ready to go? Are you working with the redevelopment board? You know, what's, what's the state of the, of the site permit and the building permit? So I've gone through the historical process and um, we had one meeting with the ARB and um, we have to solve this tree issue before we can move forward. Okay. Yeah. All the other designs have been met, the, the drainage, the, you know, uh, historical, uh, architectural, everything's been done. Um, I, I guess, Mr. Chair, it'd be useful to to kind of understand what, what, the, what the ARB's involvement in this is and how that may affect you know the decision about the tree, uh, like the contingency that that the applicant references. I don't know if there's anybody here who can speak to that. Um, yeah, I, actually, if there, I, I do see a member of the uh, redevelopment board here this evening. Oh, um, so there is. If, if Mr. Benson, if you'd like to come up and just just so we know uh, the, the interaction, if any, between what's happening, Good being evening, requested everyone. here tonight. So Good as evening. you said, I'm a member of the redevelopment board. I can't speak on behalf sure, no, of certainly. the entire redevelopment board, but I can sort of give you where this is in the process. They uh, filed for a special permit, which was required after they got uh, approval from the historic district commission, there were a number of problems with the proposal, a number of ways in which the proposal did not meet current zoning requirements, and we sent them back to make some changes. Um, they've sent a new plan to us, which I have not reviewed in detail yet, to see if they could meet all of the requirements necessary for a special permit. Um, one of the issues that we did identify to them was they proposed a straight driveway which would require removing the crab apple tree and we told them you have to start with the tree warden and see where that goes. We said an alternative would be to curve the driveway a bit so it curved and did not go out around the tree and the plan that they've sent to us does have that curve in it so the tree would not have to be removed. I, I'm not here to tell you how to vote on this or not, but I would say if you are gonna vote in favor of removal of the tree, I would suggest make it contingent on them obtaining the special permit from the redevelopment board to make the removal of the tree necessary. Of course, as I looked at um, the curve they were putting in the driveway, and again, I cannot speak for any of um, my colleagues on the board, it didn't seem like a big curve, and they've built in something in the driveway so someone can pull straight in 
and then when they back out, they'll back out into a little um, sort of extra area in the driveway and turn around so they can drive straight out. So it looked to me like the curve would not be a particular traffic hazard. On the other hand, I'm not a traffic engineer. I haven't heard what they have to say. We had thought that they would be coming back to the redevelopment board tonight, but because of this hearing and the necessity of them, we postponed that, so I don't know the new date when they're coming back. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Benson, for that, for that clarification. Um, Thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, uh, Mr. Hurd? Yeah, I would, first comment, I, I think in my memory we have had situations with, with trees where we condition the removal on some event, which I think can be, uh, Attorney Cunningham can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we can do that, correct? Attorney Cunningham? I guess it would depend on the condition. So if we, and I'm not saying whether or not we're going to vote this way, but if we were to approve the removal of the tree in the event that that plan was approved by the redevelopment board, whereas the removal would not happen unless that plan was specifically approved by the redevelopment board. Mr. Chair, yes, that would be an appropriate condition, conditional vote. Yep. Um, and my question to the applicant is, is there discussions to have any alternative types of trees in lieu, is in lieu of two crab apples? Because as I'm looking at this tree, and I don't, I don't know if um, the tree warden is available to comment on how long this tree's been there and what it will look like at full maturity, but it seems like an inappropriate street tree to me to start with because it's small and fat and looks like it sort of shoots out over the sidewalk. So I would be interested if the tree wouldn't have a suggestion if in the event that we were to approve this with the conditions set forth and that it would be replaced with two trees if there was a more appropriate tree to be planted there. And that's a question to you, Mr. Mackey, yeah, through the chair. Mr. Mackey. Yeah, we, we, we would plant anything that the uh, tree warden wanted planted there. You know, a nice, something that would mature into a nice shade tree as opposed to a 10-foot crabapple tree that doesn't really provide shade. We could put some nice elms or oaks or sycamore or something nice, and 100 years would be a beautiful, you know. That was and the crab so apple tree that's there now, it's, it's slightly damaged. It looked like it, it's got some sort of parasitic thing going on with it. So, I mean, it's not the best tree. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Mack. And, ju and just for clarification, I, I, I see your point that calling, not calling it a public shade tree because it's not that big, mm -hmm. but that is a term of art in Chapter 87. So any tree sure. on the public way is a public shade tree, even though this one may not be doing the job that effectively. <laughs> um, so, I, and, and I appreciate Mr. Hurd's question because that was a, a question I had as well. If, if you look on, at this site, and one of the things that Google Maps allows us to do is go back and, and see what the, the site looked like. And it looked like this tree was planted in sometime between 2014 and 2015. It, it, it really, in that time, it is really not a very robust tree. And, and then I think your agreement that uh, to, to work on a replacement tree, if the board is so inclined to, to allow this to go forward with conditions, that, that would be an important condition for me in consulting with the, uh, the tree warden as well. So. Um, we're not at that point where we're ready to make a motion, but I, 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 uh, I think that really is, is helping uh, the, the dialogue here. Um, any further questions from board members? Okay. Um, I will now open it up to the public. Anybody here this evening who wishes to be heard on this request? Um, sir, come on. Um, yeah, so for, for the public participation, we ask that you limit your comments to three minutes. Okay. So my name is Keith Schnebley. I live at 78 Webb Cowett Road. I am currently co-chair of the Arlington Tree Committee with um, Steve Moore, um, who's done a lot of legwork on this issue. Um, 
The, I am not speaking for the tree committee because this has come up in between meetings. We haven't taken a position on this. Um, I am on the tree committee because seven years ago there was a tree hearing to take down a tree on Webb Cowett Road. And that tree actually is still there. They curved the driveway. Um, it was an inspiring uh, moment for me and I decided then to become a volunteer in town, one of hundreds, right? Um, the things that I am interested in, I'm very gratified to hear you guys talking about um, potentially putting conditions on this. If we're if we're very in favor of growing the tree canopy, we want tall um, canopy providing, shade providing um, trees in town. If we can get uh, replacement trees that are of a level that, um, you know, DBH is already at the level of this crab tree, that would even be better with some provision for watering of the trees, that would be great. Um, so I'm not in favor of removing public trees, um, but there, I know there's a lot of conditions in this. Um, if we can curve the driveway and plant trees, that would be you know, what I would really like to do. Um, but ultimately, having taller um, shade trees and many plantings in that space would be what we would be going for. So. Great, thank, thank you, Mr. Sempley. Thanks. Anybody else who wishes to be heard on? Yep, they'll come forward, yep. Hi. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, my name is Marina Popova. Um, I participate in different groups, but I'm also a, a member of the Arlington Tree Committee. Uh, but right now I'm speaking just on behalf of myself, not as a Tree Committee member. Uh, so I wanted to point a couple of things. So one is um, I actually was checking the documentation that was uh, uploaded to the ARB uh, hearing for this address. And what I realized is that uh, that driveway curving that Keith was just talking about, there is already an alternative plan that is submitted to the ARB which shows, and I can give you the printout, so basically this is the second version of the plan which shows that it's very possible and doable to actually slightly curve the driveway which would then preserve the tree and actually make it even a bit safer because the driveway then would be a bit further from the Gray Street intersection. So it's a, actually a good option. And with that option, then you basically will preserve the tree and you know you pretty much have the same plan. So I wanted just to bring that to your attention that it's possible to do both, save the trees and <laughs> have the plan. And that's all that I wanted to say. Thank you. Thank you. And you can give you that. Um, if you wouldn't mind leaving that with Ms. Meyer, we'll add that to the record. Okay, anybody else wish to be heard on this? Uh, there's someone on Zoom. Okay, thank, thank you, Ms. Meyer. I'd be promoting um, Susan Stamps. Hi, everybody. Good evening, Ms. Stamps. Um, I, uh, I think pretty much everything has been said that needs to be said. Um, I did just want to emphasize that the, um, I was at the ARB meeting in September when they considered this project because I'm the tree committee representative to the ARB. And I will agree with Mr. Benson, there were a lot of issues with the project, not just the tree was in the way of the driveway that they wanted to put. Um, what I would like to see happen is for um, one of two, one of two, my ideal outcome for tonight would be to simply uh, postpone the decision on this request until the ARB makes a decision on a, uh, approves a final plan for this project. Um, and then it'll be, it should be an easy, much easier situation for you to decide what to do, whether it's maybe the tree doesn't need to be removed or re replant with a bigger tree or whatever. So um, I think that that's the best outcome, but otherwise I agree with Mr. Benson to at least um, make a decision and have it be contingent on 
a final approval of the uh, redevelopment board's plan. Um, and then if what he's asking for doesn't comport with the final plan, then it wouldn't go into effect. So for example, right now, um, it doesn't comport with the ARB, what the ARB has before it, which it would have considered tonight, because as Ms. Popova said, the plan dated uh, September 30, um, which was likely well before they submitted papers to the select board, already showed the curved driveway, just like on Web Cowit. Um, so those were my remarks. Thank, thank you, Ms. Stamps. Anybody else wish to be heard? Okay. Um, I have a question for Mr. Mackey. Um, well, yeah, just regarding what we just heard on the curved driveway, and I know you're put in a difficult position where you go to the ARB and they say come to the select board to deal with the tree issue. Now we're here and, and we're being asked by people will make a condition on the ARB going forward. But what you, it sounds like you prepared a plan that showed the curved driveway. Um, is there an issue with that, that, that you, or do you just want to have this flexibility? I'd just like to know your um, we produced sure. the plan. What what your thoughts are on having what was presented to us versus the alternative that you also presented to the ARB? Yeah, so we, we had a second plan just in case you know they wanted to save the tree. But from a practical standpoint, I mean it's a little crab apple tree that can be replaced. You you can buy them that size and replant them. If it was a 200 year old sycamore tree or something, we would go with the curved drive, driveway. But from a practical standpoint, I mean, you wanna, you know, best case scenario, you drive straight out of your driveway onto a main road. So we could have the curved driveway, but, um, you know, initially historical wanted it straight out. So I basically gave the historical commission free reign to design whatever they wanted there. And this is what they come up with. Um, and I didn't think the tree would be an issue, to be honest with you. So okay. we no, could- no, Thank you for that you clarification. And, and, I, I, and again, um, you, you've already said that you would put whatever tree the tree warden is, is, is recommending there. Um, yeah, I, I, I built something years ago and, and I had to plant several smaller oak trees, um, red and white oak, I think, and it was nice. Um, so we, yeah, we could replant something like that, w whatever they recommend that they would want for a nice tree there. Uh, I'd plant two of them. Okay. And, and One on each side of the driveway would be nice. And then before I turn to board members, just a further question. There's been some requests here asking whether we would consider making this conditional on you receiving approval to go ahead with your project. Um, and, and again, if the project isn't going forward, you know, let's let's. I don't want to speculate on that, but um, sure. what are your thoughts on making it conditional on you obtaining other approvals so that you can go forward um, with the, with the construction that you want to do? I mean, that sounds good, but it causes like a conundrum, right? I mean, so we're going to go back to the ARB, and there'll be people who don't want this tree cut down at all, which I respect their opinion, but. From a practical standpoint of trying to get permits to move forward, you know, we keep getting delayed. Um, okay. All right. Now, thank mean, you for your answer. Um, Mr. Hurd? Yeah. Uh, I don't see that it will cause any delays because you'll just go back to the ARB and say, well, the select board gave us conditional approval, so you're going to give them two designs, and you say it will allow them to approve the design knowing that the select board already said that the tree can be removed. So I, I don't see delays being an issue. And I think that's on, I mean, that's going to be the best result you get anyways, because otherwise if we just approve it, you can take it out and then sell the house as is with the tree gone for no reason. We, we just want to make sure that if we allow this to go forward, that we're not removing a tree that doesn't have to be there. So I think if we give you a conditional approval, then it allows you to go to the ARB and sit and make an argument to them, you know, why the driveway straight is more is safer. 
Um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with that. It's yep. just um, when we started the process, I let historical drive all the initiatives of the design and what it looked like in the driveways. And um, yeah, I basically said yes to everything. And then we get caught up with this small little tree trying to stop the project. But I, I'm OK with that condition, I guess. You're sure. Yeah. And so for me, I think I am good with a, a conditional approval and you know we don't like to take trees out but it's competing no. interest we're also trying to create create more housing stock and i just have issues with the tree that's there <laughs> <laughs> and maybe it's not it's just a baby and someone can correct me yeah, if that's yeah, the case but i think that the tree that's there even as i look for as a driving standpoint it creates some line of sight issues and I mean, a crab apple tree just in general doesn't sound like a particularly nice tree. So I think if we were to, I would be on board if we were to have a conditional approval that nothing happens to the tree unless it's approved, the plan is approved by the ARB that requires the removal of the tree and that you work with our tree warden to play it too. And it, I mean, I wouldn't. I'm not going to say exactly where they have to be. I think we can trust our tree warden to work with you to find the most appropriate locations. And however, the I don't know how specific the language has to be, Attorney Cunningham, to say that, the, that you work with them to plant two replacement trees that are satisfactory to him that they're appropriate for the location, where we could try to create some tree. It would be nice to have more shade on the on this block. and. If we could try to create some trees that you know in 10 or 15 years are going to be pretty significant in size then i think it, it we're all in a better result than what's there you know if this was a large tree that was already fully mature and created a lot of shade i think this would be an easy decision to say no just you know make the driveway swing I around concur. it but given the situation I, I think i'm comfortable with that conditional approval Okay. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. I'll take that as, as a motion. On. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yeah, I'll, I'll second that motion. I, I agree. I think if this were, were not a crab apple, I'd be having, I'd be going a different way with this, you know, and I think the developer um, acknowledged that, uh, that there's a difference here. Um, I appreciate Mr. Hurd's points. And uh, one further thing I'd like to say, and I'm glad that you mentioned housing. Um, and, uh, you know, I, there's, there's a road to go with, with the real, real development board before this comes to fruition. But one thing that I'd like to, to remind the board and remind the community is that because of our fossil fuel free bylaw and Arlington's inclusion in the 10 communities pilot uh, as part of the state, that new building permits, which I, I'm assuming, I don't know for sure, but this will be part of that, you know, would, be, would be required to, to put in uh, fossil fuel free heating infrastructure. And when it comes to climate considerations, um, you know, trees are, are, every tree is important, but I think that as we have, a, and it's not particularly germane to this decision in this, in this, this location, but I think in, in the community, we often talk about trees and development and construction. And I just want to remind all of us in the community that, that we need to look at the total calculus and that if we have a building that is going to replace, a new building that's not only going to add units, but is going to um, replace an oil burner or gas uh, or gas boiler, um, and, and have electric heat pumps, which can be and are increasingly in Arlington uh, fired by clean and renewable electricity. That that is, in my inexpert view, uh, probably worth considering whether that might be a net carbon benefit, even if a tree needs to come out. Um, and you know, again, it depends on the tree. I'm very comfortable because this is a, a crab apple, but I'm just saying that because it's a conversation. I think we are starting to have as a community, as we are balancing the needs to have more housing, more housing that, that serves more, more in different kinds of neighbors. Um, and we do very much care about the trees, and not just from carbon sequestration, but, uh, but from the shade they provide, from the love that people have for their trees. So you know, I think we, we continue to balance all those things, but one part, new part of the equation for us because of the wisdom of town meeting and passing that bylaw is that we can think about this in a different way when it comes to carbon benefit. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, other comments? I'm pretty much in agreement, but I'm not going to say anything mean about crab apple trees. <laughs> I, 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 I want to apologize to this poor little Charlie Brown crab apple tree. God bless you. 
<laughs> Thank Mr. Chair, one, one more comment. Hi, Mr. Hart. We always, I think we always have to give the disclaimer in the, these situations where, you know, to other applicants that might want to say, hey, well, you know, every time we look at a tree hearing or, you know, we used to do with, with the overnight parking permits, we'd say it's, it's all based on the, the facts that we are receiving and our ru ruling or decision is based on, you know, the unique situation that we're presented with. So, you know, where somebody might come up and say, hey, well, now it's free reign to put driveways, take down trees for driveways, that's not the case. You know, just that's our disclaimer at the end to say, don't come to us and say, now you get to take your tree down because we took this tree down. So. And th thank you, Mr. And I think that's an important distinction given the tree that's there. And again, we have the benefit of seeing the history of this tree. And, and for me, I'm, I'm going to support Mr. Hurd's motion. Um, it, it, it's important. We're getting two trees that in the long run and maybe even in the short run are going to be much better. And, and for the, the reasons Mr. Helmuth brought up um, with the fossil fuel free infrastructure too, going forward. So um, on a motion by Mr. Hurd for approval to remove the tree with two conditions, and he's mentioned the conditions, I'll try to restate them and, and we'll put those in the, uh, the minutes that nothing happens until approval from the uh, Arlington Redevelopment Board on the, on the full project. And secondly, that um, the developer, Mr. Mackey, work out with the tree warden to put two trees um, in a location or more appropriate locations on the site. Uh, Mr. Hurd? And just to be crystal clear, it's nothing happens unless the approval of the ARB requires the removal. Oh, okay. Oh, so just so okay. Thank you for that clarification. If the ARB decides that the, on the plan that snakes the driveway, obviously right. we right. don't need to remove the tree. Okay, thank you. Attorney Cunningham? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And just part of that second condition, I think Mr. Hurd talked about that the trees would be of a variety that the tree warden deemed appropriate for the site. Thank you. Yeah, and we will include that in the vote. And and um, and again, um, we won't only have the vote. Now, just one comment afterwards. So, on a motion by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmet. All in favor, say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, Mr. Mackey, I think hopefully you've gotten some direction, maybe some direction or, or some comments, Mr. Benson, for the redevelopment board. And and just a comment. Now that we've had the vote, this is one of those situations where someone is working with different boards. The Historic District Commission had issued a certificate of appropriateness, and it's hard. You go to different boards, and, and that's what they would prefer. I think this, um, what came out of this motion tonight after we heard from the public and the, and the concerns, I think it's we're going to end up with a better um, treescape on, on, on along Pleasant Street. So thank you, everyone, for the input. And Mr. Mackey, thank you for your candor. We put some questions to you, and we appreciate you. Um, letting us know more about the site and, and, and about your concerns. Great, thank you all. Okay, um, all right, so now item 12, for approval temporary repairs to Hazel Terrace. Uh, Mr. Feeney will uh, take that one. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chair. I will note I do see some abutters from Hazel Terrace uh, present here this evening that may wish to speak. Uh, but by way of background, uh, Hazel Terrace is a private way. Uh, the abutters of said private way submitted a request through the town manager's office seeking uh, assistance through the Department of Public Works to make temporary repairs to their roadway. I had the opportunity to meet with a number of abutters in August and then again uh, at the end of October uh, to discuss the condition of their road. Uh, subsequent to their request, I sought uh, evaluations from our Director of Public Works, uh, as well as the Police Department and Fire Department. While the Police and Fire Departments are still able to effectively navigate the road because they can uh, avoid these serious potholes, that would not be the case for uh, Public Works and with the uh, winter coming upon us in order to clear uh, snow from the entire roadway we would likely uh, incur damage to either our vehicles or contracted vehicles. So uh, because of that evaluation, and since uh, it would appear that the abutters have already started the process of pursuing a larger reconstruction project and are already in the process of pursuing 
uh, quotes to complete that outside of the town's betterment process, I felt comfortable bringing a recommendation uh, to this board for approval for our public works team to make uh, temporary repairs this fall to get them through uh, the winter season so that they can pursue a more uh, substantive project to probably replace their road surface uh, later next year or the following spring. So uh, just to note, if, if there were not that uh, commitment to a larger scale project that would correct the issue permanently, I uh, would not be inclined to bring uh, the matter before the board for approval, but given the, the written statement from the abutters for their willingness to pursue that project and based on the meetings I've had with them, I do feel comfortable uh, bringing it forward for approval this evening. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. Um, turn to board members. Mr. Hurd. That was a quick logistical question. Because we've talked about private ways a lot in the past couple of years and this one remedy has come up um, as an alternative where we can only do this in certain situations. But it was always my understanding that the town manager could just do that. It, does it require approval by the select board? Yes. Did, did Attorney Cunningham, did you? I did, and you're nodding, so there's no disagreement over here. Right? Yeah, no, the, the town manager, I think, cited the, like, the, the Title Three, Article Three, um, Section 2B. The board may vote to direct the town manager. Okay. All right. Okay, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Given the safety concern, though, I, I would imagine we'd have to do this anyways. I mean, I understand what you're saying is that if they weren't committed I mean, to doing something, you know, substantial in your term, I mean, we wouldn't do it. But I would say if it's a safety issue, then we would have to do it. <coughs> what kind of bugs me about this, I mean, and I think it's on the, probably on the, um, the butters, I mean, to the private way, is it seems like the contractor doing work, I mean, on another piece of property damaged the roadway, I mean, um, and so I'd like to think that there'd be some way to get some redress, I mean, from that contractor. I mean, I'm not sure who's, who that would be on, whether it's on the butters or on us, I mean, but I say that because if it is a safety issue, it is something we'd have to deal with. We couldn't just say we're not gonna deal with it because the butters aren't taking care of it, I mean, um, um, so, so that's it. I mean, I'm not sure what that leads to. I just felt I should bring that up because I did notice that the contractor damaged the road and knew that what they were doing was gonna damage the road because they took measures not to damage the other road. You know, So that's it, thank you. Then, then, thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Hurd? I mean, I'm happy to move approval, and I would just note, too, for anyone that has listened, I, I don't think the end result of these temporary repairs is gonna be a nice, be beautiful road that you kids can play street hockey on, so. <laughs> I mean, it is, in fact, temporary repairs. So the abutters are going to have to go ahead. If they want a passable road, they're going to have to go and repave it at some point anyways. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mr. Helm? Uh, th and thank you. Just to clarify, um, how will the, co will the cost of the temporary repairs be borne by the town or by the abutters? There will be no cost to the abutters in this situation. And that's, that's congruent with, with state law regarding private ways and the, and the general prohibitions against the town improving private ways. I mean, I want to do this. I just want to make sure we know I'm an issue. Yes. Okay, yeah, fine. Okay. I, I'll second that. Oh, good. Okay, I was going to say, that. I'm still looking for a second. But yeah, that, he had that look yeah, about him. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in a motion for approval by Mr. Hurd, seconded by Mr. Helmuth. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. It's approved, and thank you for the residents who who are here this evening and uh, for working with the town manager. Uh, item 13, a request for new memorial and memorial edit for Alan Hovannis, uh, Alan Jones, I believe Mr. Jones is here this evening. Good evening, Mr. Jones. Good evening, everyone. Alan Jones, Lehigh Street. Michael Armanis. And the Argazarians of the Armenian Cultural Foundation regrets that he couldn't be here. He has a family issue. So um, the uh, purposes of, of what we proposed, well, thank, thank you for hearing us. Thank you for the Public Memorial Committee for endorsing the proposal. And it's, it's really simple. We want to increase the visibility of Alan Hovannis as a brilliant composer who grew up in Arlington. And we want to pro 
promote Arlington as where Alan Havana grew up. So there are really two uh, specific things. One is to erect a signpost on the corner of Blossom and Bow Street that just says this is where Alan Havana grew up with a little plaque and a QR code and to add a little plaque and a QR code to the existing memorial stone that's next to the Dallin Museum. The QR code will go to a website, alanhovanas.com, which will be maintained, which is under development, will be maintained by the Armenian Cultural Foundation in Arlington. What, what I found unique about that is that the Cultural Foundation has an extensive collection of Havanas material and notes and scores and things like that. And they're also in uh, good communication. They're, they're friendly with the Havanas family, which opens up another window and all of this great material that's out there. So it's going to be a very valuable website for musicologists, composers, uh, anyone interested in Havanas' uh, music. Uh, so that's, if you have any questions, that's what we're proposing. Thank, 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 thank you very much. And I will note, I, I, we do have a letter within the um, agenda here we received from Mr. Salapante from the Public Memorials Committee saying that the two requests meets the cr criteria for being memorialized by the Town of Arlington. Um, so I will turn to Mr. Helmuth. I know has um, taken an interest in this as a, as a liaison, so I will turn to him first. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'm uh, Mr. Harmonious. I'm very, I'm delighted to see this project uh, progress. Um, I'm very sorry that I missed the, uh, the Havana's concert, but I watched it on YouTube and in the on Town Hall. It was fantastic. Back when I was, um, a little known fact is that one of my undergraduate degrees was in music, um, and I learned about this composer there, and he is in, truly actually an important composer um, of, of the uh, 20th century, and uh, it's a real delight to, to move to Arlington and find out that he grew up here. So I uh, move approval on both of these requests. I just have a question for Mr. Jones, who's sort of uniquely positioned to answer this question, um, and that is, um, you know, we know, uh, you know that you and I know, both understand how QR codes work, and they go to a specific URL. Um, you know, what kind of provision, this is sort of a new thing in public, uh, public installations. If the URL changes, the website goes down. Is there, you know, how hard is it? I mean, I know that the, I know a QR code encodes a specific URL. Um, so, you know, what, what kind of provision do you suggest the town makes when we're starting to put QR codes on things like this to kind of make them resilient to changes in websites uh, well, and web addresses? There are two kinds of QR codes. One's a static QR code that goes to a specific URL. Mm. The other one's a dynamic QR code, which basically redirects. And as long as you, you know, spend a little money every year, you could redirect that QR code mm -hmm. to, to anywhere. Um, but, it, you know, just like any other website, it does need to be maintained. We're relying on the Cultural Foundation to maintain it over time. Yeah. Um, and I would say, um, you know, I think the town's considering doing this in a number of other memorials as well. And I think that I would suggest that, that uh, the town manager consider employing the IT department with all their spare time. Um, but, you know, just, just as a way to maybe provide some standards or uh, some, some provision so that we have uniformity and we do have some protection because we want the QR codes to stay alive. Um, so whether that's using dynamic, um, um, you may just sign yourself up for a, for a volunteer effort, Mr. Jones, uh, you know, to give some advice because you, I mean, you're a technology yeah. guy on this. So that'd be uh, that'd be great, you know, just just to kind of make sure we get that right um, when we when we put sure. these. No, worst case, of course, you go with a chisel and you knock the thing off. But you know, yeah, well, well, yeah, right, right, yeah nobody right, wants right. to do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good. Uh, thank you very much. And it's like any, you know, the QR code is no different than putting up a URL for something Indeed. You know, in text. It just yeah. makes it easier yeah. to go up with your phone. What we envision is people going to the memorial at the Dallin Museum or on Bow Street, putting their phone up and going to the site and being able to listen to stuff yeah. while oh. they're sitting on the bench. Yeah. Fabulous. Yeah. No, I can't wait. I'm very excited. Uh, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Second. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Any further comments? Mr. Diggins. Well, I just want to express my appreciation to Mr. Armanius, me, for his patience being on this. I know he's been working on it me, for a long time, and he's been really good natured being um, about being, um, just kind of coaching this project through me. And, 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 um, and, and um, I mean, he, he QR codes mean you know, they're the thing now. You know, not sure how long they're going to be the thing, you know. And, and I'm kind of curious. Have you just tried like putting the phone up there and using like Google Lens or or Apple Lens and seeing where that takes you? Cause, cause you mean good? Because I mean, because we, we I have the app. Well, on my phone I have an Android, I mean, and 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 or Pixel, I mean, and and I can use Lens on it, so I take a mm -hmm. picture or something, and then if I use the Lens app, it will take me like. It'll tell me what it is, I mean, and then if there's a website yeah. associated with it, it'll take me to the uh, website. Almost every phone camera has an ability to decode QR codes in and out. In fact, sometimes it's annoying if you try to take a picture of something with a QR code, it takes you to the website <laughs> instead of taking a picture. 
But, right. But this doesn't require the QR code is what I'm getting at. I mean, so, so if I well, were to take a, put my, my phone up and just kind of get that placard that says yeah. Havanas, you know, the, it would then tell me more about that and then maybe even lay out some websites for me. So with some good SEO, I mean, I would get to the website. I'm just wondering, I mean. Yeah, you mean it re reads the URL directly? No, no, it doesn't, no, it doesn't even require, like, like let's say I, mean, I saw a bird, I, mean, I took a picture of a bird and I wanted to know oh. what kind of bird that is, I mean, using lens, I mean, it would then tell me what kind of bird that is and then, and then it would show me a list of websites that I could access I mean, to learn even more. Well, that's the problem. It's like a search engine to show you a list. We wanted to go. The one right. That, let's talk. I mean, not, maybe, yeah. let's talk about that later. Yeah. But uh, yeah. You know, we can't require people to. But you know, clearly technology changes yeah. fast, and you know, you deal with it. But. That's the chisel. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Any further? Okay. On a um, motion for approval of the two items for the request for the new memorial, memorial edit for Alan Havanas. Um, the motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. All in favor, say aye. Hi. Hi. Thank, you. thank you very much. Thank you. For thank you. And, and I think, you know, I'm not quite sure what the next step is. So I would probably talk to the manager about. Absolutely. You know, I mean, the Cultural Foundation is, will provide the funding, but I'm just not sure the mechanisms through DPW or whatever. Thank you. So thank you. Next is item 14, um, TAC recommendations for Gloucester, Endicott, and Churchill intersections. Uh, Jim Stubby from the Transportation Advisory Committee, and as Mr. Stubby comes up, we have, it's, it's just a coincidence, but as we were going back and looking at when Mr. LeBlanc was first appointed to the Zoning Board of Appeals, on the same night Mr. Stubby was appointed uh -huh. to the Transportation Advisory Committee back on March 6, 2023. So welcome. Coincidental, right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. And I'm having, still having fun doing this. Great. <laughs> Thank great. you. Thank you for joining us this evening and, and coming back with recommendations. Yeah, absolutely. So that, this request was made by the residents in the community. They had a petition they signed and brought to us, brought to the board, it was referred to TAC. We looked at it and went, yeah, this looks pretty reasonable. We referred it to DPW to look at. It sat for a little while and went back. I think the requester, Mr. Bridgen, Bridgen, came back and asked for your input again and like, where is it? So we had a meeting in September and he attended the meeting virtually. We had a really good discussion about what DPW thought. They looked at his, the plans that were recommended and said, all looks reasonable. We'll have to figure out what the real design is once we actually go to redo the intersection. They also made the observation that it is not on the three to five year plan for DPW. So it's not currently in the plan when it comes up for investigation or any kind of curb or ramp work or anything, they'll come after it at that point. The only other issue that was raised by DPW was what happens when you add, the proposal adds a, a fair amount of green spaces. Who actually mows it and takes mm -hmm. care of it? You just, you have to have the discussion. We don't have to solve it now, but you know, that's sort of one of those future placeholders that says, okay. And the requester was reasonably happy with the discussion and that we all seemed to think it was the right thing to go do. So our recommendation really is for you to give direction to DPW to add it to their list at the first convenience and then you know rebuild or redesign at that point thank, thank, thank you um i'll turn to board members for any questions um Ms. Mahan? i'd like to move receipt of tax recommendations which folds in the manager and department of public works and others and <clears throat> i know one of the other considerations um was looking at the past 10, 20 year history and um, accidents, et cetera. Um, and that also would place it um, not high in the list. So, but I'll leave it to the Transportation Advisory Committee, the manager and DPW too, um, as it comes up in the course of taking care of that. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Swan. Uh, second by Mr. Hurd. Okay, and uh, before we go to the vote, I appreciate the fact that you invited the requester to the meeting, that's a really good way to, to hear the concerns and, and it was a very active, us when you come back. participant too. It was a good meeting. Good. Well, that's great. Actively there and seemed to have the right attitude of we know it's not busy. We we really just think if you're going to touch it, let's make it right. We have a lot of those intersections in Arlington. They're yeah, absolutely. Very wide and curvy, and they were designed to make cars go fast. So right. we're trying to kind of slow them down at this point. Absolutely. No, thank you. On, on a uh, motion for receipt by Mrs. Mahan and, and referral to DPW 
for redesign when the intersection comes up for major paving and reconstruction. Seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. Thank you very Thank much, you. Mr. Stubbing. Okay. Item 15, request for a handicapped parking space on Medford Street for Fidelity House Gymnasium. Before I open this up, I'm going to turn to Mr. Feeney, and we may have a request for a motion afterwards. Mr. Feeney? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, when reviewing this request, uh, personally, I noted there was some uh, potential conflicts curbside with the proposed location for uh, the parking space as indicated on that site plan. Uh, and I would note that we had not done any further review with other internal stakeholders uh, to consider that location. And further, I think there may have been some confusion around uh, the requirements for inaccessible space with respect to that project. So in light of, uh, you know, those bits of uncertainty, I would uh, ask the board to uh, table this matter this evening. Of course, we have a significant amount of time should we uh, need to reconsider before the building would be occupied. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. Uh, Mr. Helmuth, move to table the item. Thank you. Second. Okay, further discussion. All right, on a motion to table by Mr. Helmuth, second, uh, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Favor say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Feeney. Uh, next is uh, for review and discussion, package store licenses. We're going to have two in a row here, 16 and 17. 17 will be the host community agreement discussion. And I had brought this up um, at a prior meeting. We talked about this earlier this year as well. And, and this really specifically is, is geared toward a discussion of the package store licenses for 80 Broadway and for 232 Mass Ave, and so we're in a situation where licenses, once they're granted, come up for renewal uh, every calendar year. Um, for 80 Broadway, that location, which was a former uh, standalone building, has been torn down. There is a mixed-use property that is just about complete. The package store has been closed this whole time. The character of the property has changed dramatically and we have um, within our policies um, notification requirements when a place of business closes on a temporary or permanent basis. We also have a requirement um, to come back to the board if a store layout is going to be changed and changes can't be made without the submission of an amended floor plan to the board and the board's written approval. So starting with 80 Broadway, because the, the character of the building has changed so much, we're not really sure what is happening, whether there is a, a, a lease agreement or whether it's control. It's not a hearing for a package store license, but I wanted to bring up the policies because this is something um, that's going to be coming into the select board office at, to Ms. Marr at renewal time. And it seems that given the change there, this might be something that the board may want to hear back in terms of what's going on before there is a renewal. Um, so that's that's the background on on 80. Um, on it, is anybody here from e e either the location, 80 Broadway or 232 Mass Ave? There's no requirement that they be here tonight. I didn't know if I they- I do believe that there is somebody from I think, it, what's the address on Mass Ave 230? 232 Mass Ave. I do believe there is somebody from there. Um, the owner of 80 Broadway noted her acknowledgement that it was here tonight, but I do not see them present on the meeting. Okay, all right, so let's start with 80 Broadway and then I'll, I'll just move on. And again, because we're getting up to the end of the year in December, we have our renewals. Um, I thought it is appropriate for the board to, to be aware of this and maybe uh, provide some direction to Ms. Marr. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Sorry if you just said this, I zoned out for a minute, but. The 232 Broadway, is that up for a special permit in the next couple of weeks? Because I, I got a phone two, call. Two, 232 Mass Ave. 232 Mass yes. Ave. Yeah, yeah, I'll get, I'll get into yeah, that in a moment. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so, because that one's, because our approval is still pending on that, right? If yeah, they get and that one, permit, and they may yeah. ask for some assistance on timing from Attorney Cunningham and Ms. Marr, but just given what's what's happened at 80 Broadway, and it's it's because it's been closed for so long, this past year, they did notify us that the store was closed and that's there was no further action taken. But I think um, 
you know, had a parking lot before. The only parking on site now is, is for people who will be living in the building. Um, just a request to the board working through our policies and maybe working with Attorney Cunningham. Is this the type of thing that you would like to have a full revisit in terms of what's being proposed there? So, so put that out to board members for any comments, questions. Mr. Diggins? And the alternative to not? Well, I think the alternative is if nothing's happening, and, and again, if a, if, a, if a store is closed, even temporarily, that is grounds for revocation of the, of the license. There was notification, so we, we were notified that, of that. I don't think we are notified right at the beginning, but there's a question of what do you do with a, a license that was granted when you had a, a completely different building that was on the site at the time of approval. And typically what happens when someone gets approved for a license, whether it's a common vitulars license or whether it's a package store license, every year they submit paperwork for renewal. There's an obligation to update if there's been any proposed changes. But here, we've never seen a situation where the building dis is gone, has been demolished, something new is coming in. We don't know what the plans are. The retail or the commercial space within that building is going to be on two levels. We haven't, um, I'll take it back, one of the sites on Mass Ave is a mixed-use building, but a direct um, entrance from Mass Ave. But the character of the property has changed so much, it seems like there's an obligation for us perhaps to revisit the conditions of yeah. approval. Yeah, I mean, it seems like it's so, it just seems so, I don't mean just in, in a condescending way, it just seems so obvious that we would, that I was kind of wondering what is the alternative that I was missing. Oh, oh the alternative is just to instruct Ms. Maher when the, uh, when the renewal notification comes in to issue the renewal and no further action on the board's part, just the way the other licenses for existing package stores yeah. go on. So that's the alternative. Yeah. Well, it seems like it has to come back. That would be my, my yeah. feeling. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Ms. Mahan. I, I agree with that um, because I, I, I wanted to make sure, having been on the board at the beginning of this, that um, in, this was discussed in the beginning, that no business or site owns any particular license. And um, part of the approval is, is, is site control that comports with um, that then current board's wishes um, regarding uh, issuing that license, which we all take very seriously, including the business owner. Um, and uh, that what we approved this license for, for that site no longer exists. So I, I would not be uh, inclined to let them maintain custody and control of it. It should come back to us. But that's in December. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Th thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, I mean, I. I think if there's a process for us to bring them in and just make a determination whether or not they should, if they can show us that they have a lease and they still have the location and, I mean, I'm not particularly swayed with parking because I think we have liquor stores that don't have parking, um, but that's a discussion for that night. I mean, I would like to err on the side of letting an existing business continue to operate in town. I'm not aware of any issues that they've had or any violations and I'm just saying I'm not aware I'm not saying that it hasn't happened so I mean if there's a way to review have them resubmit the application without opening the license up to you know multiple bids that would be my preference and, and I think we can confer with attorney Cunningham I mean there is a provision again within our policies that if there is an updated floor plan, now updated here means a completely new floor plan, it has to be approved by the board. So at a minimum, that type of discussion could be had. Which is a restaurant or anything, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, well, this is specifically with no, the alcohol policies. No, I know, if, if, we, if a restaurant change there, I'll look too. They yeah, would yeah, have to get yeah. reviewed as well. But, but maybe within that context, the approval is, okay, come back to us, show us what's there now. And then board members can decide, is this just a renewal situation or would more be required in, in terms of being comfortable? And I think to your point, that doesn't necessarily jeopardize the license um, prior to the hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, Mr. Helm? Yeah, I concur. I, would, I wouldn't want to see this as an automatic uh, renewal, but I think, um, you know, I also concur with Mr. Hurd. I think that 
uh, from what I know, the history of the business has, you know, when it was when it was operating in the old, old location, was a good corporate um, you know, neighbor um, uh, to the town, and so, um, you know, I think I'd want to give them a chance to come in and, and you know and discuss that with us and see if it, a renewal would be appropriate. Okay. Yeah, th thank, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Attorney Cunningham. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm, I'm happy to work with the board to craft some perhaps revisions to the regulations that allow the board to retain its license granting authority granted under Chapter 138 uh, in a way that makes it possible for the board to make sure the licenses are being um, used, utilized in accordance with the conditions that were set forth at the time they were granted, but then also making sure businesses have some continuity and, and some certainty in the way they do business. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Uh, Mrs. Mahan? And if I could just add, um, when we do um, avail ourselves of this opportunity. I would certainly be interested in, um, uh, I understand intention is, is one point, but also um, if this particular site will be available and affordable um, to this, this particular business. And I don't know um, that we can necessarily require the owner of this development to submit either in writing or verbally, um, that if a business owner comes in and says, oh yeah, we're going right back in that space, everything's all set, um, I'm assuming under the law we can't require the uh, owner of the building who may say um, the rent's unaffordable or they don't want that business in their mixed use residential. But I'll leave that to Attorney Cunningham and if there's anything we can do, um, if we can at least notice the owner, um, if that's legal, um, along with the business um, owner uh, the night that we have this. Um, and I'm pretty sure under the law we can't say to the owner of this building it's a requirement that you submit any um, remarks, whether in writing or whatever, but at least let them know and get the opportunity. So thank you. Okay, thank, thank you, Mr. Matt. And, and at a minimum, I mean, we would require control of the site, whether it's through a lease, and then that would be part of the the renewal document. So, okay, so I think we have direction on that. That would be something that we would schedule probably in December uh, before the, the close of the year. Um, 232 Mass Ave, and, and I only raise 232 and 80 because there's unique circumstances related to each, and in neither instance is there a package store there right now. 232 Mass Ave, we had issued a license. There was a condition on the license that uh, a time period for seeking zoning relief, um, and there was also some requirements from the ABCC. My understanding, at least to date, Ms. Maher asked for clarification on this, that the ABCC still has not approved the license because of some issues um, regarding the lease of the site. Is that correct? No, the ABCC has approved they, their license. They have approved it. Okay. Yes. All right. So, so the ABC had, in, which is what happens after you come to the local level, the ABCC has approved that. There is still a zoning issue. My understanding is the applicant went before the Zoning Board of Appeals, um, I believe maybe for a variance, and then it was determined that a variance wasn't the appropriate relief to be seeking on October 8th. 2024, they filed an application for a special permit, and that hearing will be upcoming. I think that's what you were referring to, Mr. Hurd. So again, that one is, there's some unique circumstances there because we knew that, that there was a zoning issue. There is a question on the timing of when the relief was sought before the Zoning Board of Appeals, but I will say there were delays from the ABCC in terms of their approval, so it wasn't as clear cut in terms of how that timing worked. But we will be in a, a situation at renewal time that um, unless the ZBA acts between now and the end of the year, that that issue may not be resolved and we will be up for renewal. And it seems to me that that might be one where we may need some information before it's an automatic renewal. And, and you're saying the applicant might be with us this evening maybe to like provide us with an update as to yes. what's going on. I'm gonna promote, there are two attorneys here representing them sure. that I will promote now. While they're doing that, can I just ask a question? Sure, Mr. Sure. Helmsel. So, yeah. Is that, have, have we issued them the license? No, we have not. That, that was, yeah, that I, wanted, I wanted to clarify we that because- We have the license that's been approved. Yeah, but, um, but the board, but, but Mr. Chair, so the, but I recall the board vote was that uh, our vote was conditional upon receive, obtaining the re, obtaining the zoning relief, 
within a, a deadline. And my, am I correct, Mr. Chair, that that deadline had not been met, so we, we would not be able to issue the license until, unless we revoted. Yeah, and, and, and that's the question. And, and again, I think this is something where we need further information because there were some things that may have prevented them mm -hmm. from going to the ZBA. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Attorney Cunningham? Yeah, so thank you, Mr. Chair. I was, I was present at the ZBA meeting. They filed an application for a variance. They were um, informed by the ZBA that they probably should seek a different type of relief, so they withdrew that mm -hmm. request. I, th I think that was, uh, could have been four months ago, at least. Um, then there was some consideration regarding the site itself because of it's in an R R1 or an R6 district, so they need to, the determination needed to be made whether prior non-performing use uh, could still be in play for this particular site. So after consultation with the um, building inspector, that determination was made that it could be. However, um, they're going for the special use permit on the 12th of November, which is obviously upcoming. And the decision regarding whether to grant that is obviously lies with, uh, entirely within the purview of the ZBA. Great, thank, thank, thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, and just before we do, I see Attorney Upton is here, and I will turn to him in just a moment, but there's one other item I had, and this, I believe this goes back, yeah. So on July 17th, 2023, the board voted to approve the license for the package store. The license, the, Mr. Diggins had moved approval, and the conditions included not allowing nips, cakes, malt liquor, candy, lottery, and a commitment to apply for zoning relief within six months. That, that, that was the, the condition of the vote. So with that, I, I see Attorney Upton here, and I, um, I don't know who else is um, with him, but if um, one of you could provide us with an update as to where things stand at the ZBA. And we ask this just because we are coming up to renewal time on the on the license and, and we're going to need information. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, uh, since this appears to be mostly a zoning issue, uh, my colleague Mike Corey, who's filing and pursuing the zoning relief, is here as well. So maybe he can start off and then we'll be glad to answer any questions for either of us. Great. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mike Corey of Madoff and Corey at Foxborough. Uh, we represent the applicant before the zoning board. Uh, Mr. Cunningham, uh, gave you a, an accurate uh, summary that we fully agree with. Uh, next Tuesday, we have a hearing. Well, uh, let me just give you a background on what we're doing with the zoning board. Af uh, it's my understanding that the liquor license went final with ABC approval in January of this year. Um, we finalized the lease shortly thereafter uh, and started discussions with the, plan uh, the building department um, regarding what kind of relief we'd need. Um, the, th this is a three or four unit, um, I apologize, a three or four unit uh, single story commercial building uh, that is grandfathered, it's in a residential zone. Um, so we were thinking it would need a special permit uh, to change a non-conforming use. But the problem was that during COVID, the, um, the property, which was formerly used as a dry cleaner, um, had been vacated and the landlord was scrambling um, to find a tenant. Got us, we were in negotiations and then uh, in the context of those lease negotiations, we were um, uh, pursuing uh, the liquor license before uh, the select board as well as the ABCC. Um, the, um, we filed the zoning application in, uh, I believe it was May. Um, we were heard um, in the summer and the discussion turned from uh, whether we could, rather than a special permit, we had also requested a variance uh, for use, which the, um, uh, the chairman of the zoning board said that the uh, uh, the town was not permitted because the bylaw did not allow that under section 10 of article 40, uh, section uh, chapter 40 of the Massachusetts general laws. So we argued that there was no abandonment uh, and the zoning, uh, the zoning board determined that that was outside, that determination of whether there was an abandonment such that the two year rule applied was something that should properly be addressed 
uh, with the building commissioner and town council, uh, we and the landlord um, entered into discussions uh, with both parties. And I believe uh, we were told that the um, determination was that the, uh, uh, that the um, commercial use as to that one unit, because the others are, are fully leased, have not been abandoned. So we're going to um, the zoning board at, we have a hearing next Tuesday uh, seeking a special permit for a change in uh, grandfathered use. Okay. And, and, and thank you for that update. And that was something I think when we talked about this, that you hadn't taken that subsequent step to, to apply for the special permit. We talked about this back in September and I appreciate the update here. And, and again, this is one where it just seems like we just need to be notified between now and we, we address our renewals at our second meeting in December. So we'd like to just keep apprised as yep. to what's going on. And if there's any further concerns that, that members have, I can consult with Attorney Cunningham when it comes up to that point. But um, that that's the reason why I put this one on as well. I appreciate you both coming here this evening. Is there any other questions for either attorney? Okay. All right. Thank you both. That that was all that that that, that was all we had for for this evening on on our end and, and I know you've got some work ahead of you at the ZBA. Thank you very much, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Take care. Okay. Um, item seventeen in a similar situation, except now we're with the, the marijuana yeah. licenses for review and discussion, host community agreement, Calix Peak of Massachusetts. Mr. Feeney is going to give us uh, an update in terms of what is happening there and just the timing of the host community agreement and what's happening or has happened before the uh, ARB. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So with respect to Calix Peak, as this board uh, may recall, a host community agreement was uh, issued to this particular uh, purveyor, and it was executed on March 1st of 2022. Uh, obviously, a significant amount of time elapsed, and then uh, they have since applied for a special permit for the redevelopment board. Uh, one thing I will note is that special permit hearing uh, was that process was begun in May and or June of 2023, and it was continued for six consecutive months until November of uh, 2023, at which point uh, the applicant, Calix Peak, asked the Redevelopment Board to close the hearing that they had opened in May. So given that uh, nearly one year has elapsed since their special permit uh, was closed initially and there have been uh, no further submissions to the Redevelopment Board for reconsideration of their project plans at the Summer Street site. It would seem appropriate, especially with the three-year anniversary of the execution of their host community agreement uh, coming upon us in just a couple of months, that we should invite the applicant uh, before this board for uh, a formal update at an upcoming meeting to get uh, a status update with respect to uh, their progress with uh, the landlord and being able to proceed with uh, a special permit. I will note this is slightly different as the chair referred to than a license because there is technically no expiration date on it. It has a term, but that term runs for five years from the date the establishment opens for service to the public. So we're still in this sort of middle ground where they haven't reached that state yet, but where this host community agreement is occupying the potential uh, third special permit that is available under our zoning bylaw and has for uh, coming up on three years. Thank, thank you, Mr. Feeney. And, and this is one of those situations where um, we could enter into 10 host community agreements, but the the, the limitation is is the ARB can't issue more than three special permits, and that's um, where we are right now. Mr. Hurd? That's what I was going to say. It, well, I was going to ask that town council just to clarify that we could enter into another host community. There's nothing to stop. 
There's nothing in these host community agreements that are outstanding that says we can't enter into a host community agreement with someone else with the understanding that it's a race to get the law special permit, right? Yeah, uh, Attorney Cunningham. I'm not saying we would, but. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just, think, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, probably best practice to not have three outs, more than three outstanding at the same time um, and create that race. I think that. I guess what I'm saying is if Calix Peak just does, we invite them to come and they don't come and we don't hear from them, they can't hold us to anything. We, we can say, all right, you know, we gave them, we gave you your opportunity. We don't have any specific way, mechanism to revoke this host community agreement that's outstanding, but we're going to open it up for someone else who wants to actively per pursue this. Yeah, Attorney Cunningham. Mr. Chair, thank you. I, I think there are, there are ways in which this agreement could be deemed void. Um, I think that the manager's suggestion that this particular this particular agency come in before this board to report on the status would be a helpful step in um, either moving forward with the opening of an establishment or um, moving us further down the line towards um, potential revocation of the terms of, of the agreement. Th 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 thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Yeah, no, I think that makes, that makes good sense. And I will say that when they first, when we first entered the host community agreement, I was chair and we've gone through a full cycle and I'm chair again, and it's still not, not in there. So it's, it's, uh, it's been a- it's So you're, been a, you're groundhog night. It's been a while, yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, Mrs. Mahan? Um, I have a question, either the chair or whomever, um, and this is just my naivete and it's not my background forte, but um, just because I saw recently the State Cannabis Commission came out with at least one new change regarding delivery, um, and that made me think of this question. Um, am I correct that in terms of the guidelines we have and that we have to follow, whatever the State Cannabis Commission, it's a two-part question, whatever the State Cannabis Commission issues as requirements um, for a cannabis business through the host community agreement, that's something we have to honor because it's the law. Yeah, yeah, and, right. and, 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 okay. and my second question would be, if that's the case, because um, this is the first time I can remember there's something, new. first, the Cannabis Commission issued everything, we knew it, now they've had at least one change to it, and there could be more, and I just haven't followed on it. Um, when the State Cannabis Commission issues new guidelines, and the only one I can cite is the recent one regarding delivery, whether we offer delivery or not, is that something that automatically gets folded into um, our purview of host community agreements, or is this something we need to do to adopt that? And, and there's a nuance. I'm going to turn to Attorney Cunningham in, in a and moment. And tell me if I'm not asking the question. No, no, right. you're asking the, the question perfectly fine. I think there's a distinction here in terms of when, when the host community agreement was entered and when the changes were made to the regulations. But oh. I'll turn to Attorney Cunningham. That's right. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Ms. Mahan, yeah, it's, it, that is the right question to ask, and it's been asked before courts uh, recently. So the, the changes in regulations that the Cannabis Commission made, are they applicable to agreements that predate those changes? And the court, uh, at least in Essex Superior Court, I forget the name of the case, Ms. Mahan, but uh, they said no, um, that the host community agreement does not need to change pursuant to regulations that post-date that agreement. Um, if we signed a new agreement today, we'd be subject to the changes that have been made, um, but they can't enforce them retroactively. And then the housekeeping question is, those, if there's a new host community agreement, those are already folded in. There's no action that this board has to take to codify those changes that the Cannabis Commission has recently made, or do we? Uh, Mr. Chair, no, no we'd, we'd be, any new host community agreement that we would even consider would need to include the changes that have been made. Um, th there'd be no action necessary, but the, the, it would come before the board, I think, that, as it did before, but not codify or accept those changes. Uh, I, th I think that's your question, Ms. Yes, because th yeah. there's other things that have come out of the State House, especially around fossil fuels and f no. fuel and other things that we have to, and or town meeting has to adopt and accept 
but we don't. It's automatically folded into the new, if there's a new applicant, new process. That's right, Ms. Bond. Yeah. And I, I, sorry if I... Oh, no, no problem. No. Mr. Chairman, if I, I just may, kind of in response to Mr. Hurd's good question about, you know, what duties the applicants have or the, the vendors have, I didn't specifically cite uh, Section 2A of the agreement, which requires the operator shall be responsible for retaining all necessary licenses, permits, and approvals required for the operation of its marijuana establishment and shall work cooperatively and good faith with the town in securing the prompt and efficient siting, planning, permitting, preparation, etc. So there are obligations put upon um, the signatories to the HCA. So I want to make sure that people are complying with that. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So you had mentioned that there are steps we can take to revoke or avoid the agreement. I mean, what would be the timeline on that or how many steps? Mr. Uh, Attorney Cunningham? I, I think ideally that the um, Calix Peak or any other vendor would come into to compliance with the terms of the agreement. I think that's obviously the, the uh, preference. Um, we certainly don't want to pursue revocation procedures unnecessarily. However, um, if it were determined that anybody, Calix Peak in, in particular, were in violation of the contract terms, they would need to be provided notice uh, pursuant to Section 10 of the Host Community Agreement, which provides for 60 days uh, before any further action could be taken. Thank you, Attorney Cunningham. Any further questions? Okay, so based on this discussion, I'll work with Ms. Marr and uh, Mr. Feeney and Attorney Cunningham to invite Calix Peak in for an update uh, prior to the end of the year. So you're going to work on alcohol and weed? Yeah, that's right. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and, and we still have Sorry, a seat. Mr. Hurd and I still have a subcommittee <laughs> on. Uh, okay, subcommittee, on, on, go on, for on, it. <laughs> meals at, at uh, local establishments. Uh, okay. Item 18, request for proposed amendments to Schedule 1 parking on Winter Street. Um, I believe Mr. Feeney is going to uh, take this one. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, in your materials for this meeting, you had uh, a rather detailed memo from Officer uh, Corey Rateau, whom you all know uh, <coughs> is instrumental in the traffic and parking unit in APD. Uh, so with this issue, there has been sort of a long-standing concern about periodic blockages of Winter Street due to uh, parking in some of the narrow narrower sections of roadway. Uh, in response to the most recent complaint uh, and with a report of a school bus being stuck uh, on the road, we did uh, bring this up at our <coughs> internal uh, traffic safety working group and we determined that uh, this was a fairly <laughs> serious safety concern and that it warranted uh, the group making a field and site visit uh, to test the conditions and determine exactly what the parameters of any parking restriction should be. Uh, as the memo notes, there has been uh, over a period of time different signs in different locations along much of the distance on the uh, west side of Winter Street from Mass Ave down to uh, what is now the Leslie Ellis School. Uh, again, you can tour the Google Street view over time and look at, at different points in time and see there was once a sign and then there wasn't a sign, but then there was a sign a little bit further down. But the condition we're left with today is a not particularly well-defined uh, parking restriction and similarly a parking restriction that is signed but upon further review may be unenforceable because the parking rules and orders don't properly codify some of the signs that are in fact in place. So uh, again we conducted a test using uh, you know one of the ladder trucks and we brought some vehicles parked them at different areas to determine where the uh, stricture was at its narrowest and what the extent limits should be. Uh, those were determined, as you can see, uh, by the foot using uh, a wheel to take a measurement so we would know uh, exactly where the parking restriction should uh, cease. In this case, on the, uh, again, the west side of Winter Street, the restriction would pass uh, both the Leslie Ellis School and then the uh, park property under the jurisdiction of the Park and Recreation Commission and then uh, terminate at that boundary of the public property. And then on the east side, uh, as noted in the memo, something that's being sought is adding uh, approximately 75 feet 
uh, just beyond, uh, that'll take us just beyond the park area on the east side of the road. So that would impact approximately two uh, residential parcels where there would be no parking there for what was found to be another uh, narrowing. So the uh, proposed uh, changes to the parking rules and orders are outlined in uh, Officer Rateau's memo and should be, uh, if the board agrees, the, the subject of this evening's vote. Great. Thank you, Mr. Feeney. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, the following amendments be made and adopted into Schedule 1 of the Traffic Rules and Orders. Um, striking the line Winter Street West from Mass Ave to a point 300 feet north quote unquote no parking, inserting the line Winter Street West from Mass Ave to a point 1,050 feet north, quote unquote, no parking, and adding a line Winter Street East from a point 975 feet to a point 1,050 feet north, quote unquote, no parking. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Hurd. I'll second. I'll just add a little antidote. This reminds me of when I was on the TAC way back when we did a parking study before the meters in Arlington Center, and we found out there was virtually no consistency on any of the signage in Arlington Center about 10, 15 years ago. Maybe one block said four hours, the next block said two hours. I think some of them said two hours between certain time periods. <laughs> and we didn't find anything to back up where the source of uh, the information on these signs. So it's good to get signs consistent for uh, people that, who are trying to park in our, on our streets. Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, anything further? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Diggins? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I mean, I like the direction in which we're headed here. You know, we, I know it says it's not a precedent, but I like, I like the way we're headed here, you know, uh, 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 with this in. And as it was noted, I mean, we are, we are looking at this in, in TAC, and so this is going to kind of accelerate me some of our conversations in TAC, I mean, uh, about this, you know, so... Um, more to come, perhaps, I mean, about this. I mean, and in order to make sure that um, the, what we vote on, I mean, actually does get reflected, you know, in the um, in our traffic rules and order. I mean, um, I mean let's bring this back I mean, to the board next week. I mean, with the actual change in the document, so that we are absolutely sure um, it's happening. That's it. Thank you. Sir. Thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. And, and, and just on that, I, I, I think maybe. Administratively, we can do that and maybe ask that it just be circulated to board members if yeah. that's okay. Yeah, sure. Okay, Thanks. all right. Um, great. So, on a motion by Mrs. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Hurd, all in favor say aye. 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 Okay, that concludes item 18. Uh, next is new business. Ms. Marr. No new business, thank you. Attorney, uh, thank you. Attorney Cunningham? No new business, thank you. Mr. Feeney? No new business, thank you. Mr. Diggins? Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. So I know we're going to do renewals soon. I mean, and I, I know this kind of came up in the joint meeting that we had um, with ARB, but yeah, I'm not sure what the mechanism is for about checking signage, I mean, on storefronts. I mean, uh, uh, I asked a question, I mean, about I mean, the importance of I me mean, kind of consistency with store signage. I mean, and I know the conversation went towards blight. I mean, that wasn't really what I was getting at. It was more like, I mean, uh, what is the value of making sure that I me mean, only 50% of a storefront, you know, has signage on it? But I'm just noticing a bit of inconsistency in the East. Now, I don't have an ecstatic issue with things, I mean, but I think if some stores are playing by the rules and others aren't, you know, then it might be, uh, you know, well, just a, an imbalanced playing field. So I don't know to what extent we look at that, you know, before we, we just automatically renew. I mean, but if there is a mechanism for looking at that before we do a renewal, then I would ask that we take a look, you know. That's it. Thank you. No. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mrs. Mahan? Um, yes, just very briefly, um, joined with the chair, um, Mr. DeCourcy and Mr. Hurd, uh, along with the town manager and some other town employees, including our board administrator, um, to the um, Arlington Firefighter uh, Retirement Party up in Woburn. Um, and definitely appreciate um, remarks by the chair and the town manager in attendance at that event. Um, it it, it kind of piggybacks into, and I think when Mr. Diggins first got on the board, it might have been the impetus for him, you know, talking about employee recognition and other things. But um, I know I may have sort of a, a uh, known for talking about the firefighters um, 
retirement party, um, but I do appreciate, I know it's yet another meeting, not only for all of us and time away from our family and other things, but also for the town manager. So I did appreciate um, the attendance there, and I just wanted to note that. Um, and then um, two things uh, regarding uh, positions that, uh, one, I had a conversation uh, this morning with the town manager regarding the diversity, equity, and inclusion opening, um, and had some uh, conversations around that. And uh, the manager also cued me into some thoughts uh, in terms of that department. Sometimes when there's an opening, there's an opportunity. Um, and um, I, he definitely is on the right course for that. The other thing that I didn't speak to him about, because I forgot to put it on my phone, um, and I don't know that it's anything, that anything can change, but, um, just wanted to put it forth um, to my colleagues and to the town manager regarding the facilities director position, which has had quite a storied um, existence, so to speak. Um, and I won't go into all of that, but that just made me wonder, um, and I know it was a p position that the previous town manager, Mr. Chapdelaine, who poached, who took our uh, DEI person. But anyways, um, a position that was created by him, and I don't know, um, and I'm sure the manager's already looked into this, and it may not need to be said, but um, if there's anything that can be done with that position for future success, whether it's redefining um, what the role is, or anything else, um, it's, and I'll leave it there, and vetting procedures, but that predated you. And then the other thing that I did bring up to um, the manager is, you know, we're all on different forms of social media and, and we can only interact and, and do it as much as time allows. So, and I'm one of those, you know, start and stops thing, but um, I d did want to note, um, and I try to do my best to, you know, on the two different pages, the select board page, my own personal, as well as my own personal Facebook page, post things. But um, I was very impressed that when I post our, our new town engineer, uh, Mr. Copperthorn, Copperthorn, how many uh, comments and likes and, and others um, that I got. Um, and I'm pretty sure I know his father, but I wasn't aware of who this person was. Uh, I spoke to the manager who um, filled me in on his background and um, his uh, management style to date and some of the, uh, no, I shouldn't, don't mean to say situations, but you know things that come up at Arlington that he definitely knew how to handle it and as expeditiously as possible. And I was really impressed, so I'm gonna make it a point to, I know what he looks like because he's on my Facebook page, but I um, wasn't aware of this great employee that all these people are, are saying, yay. Um, Glad that happened, so that's it, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Mr. Helmut. No, no business. Mr. Hurd. I too was just gonna mention the Fire and Fires retirement party. It's always a great event. It's fun to go to, um, it's a great crowd. Uh, Chief Kelly and former Chief Jefferson, who I think is also eagerly awaiting the results <laughs> of the uh, facilities director search. Um, Actually, I'm kind of happy with him, but anyways. <laughs> but no, it, it's a fun event, and congratulations to Deputy Casey, as well as the many promotions that we heard this year. We certainly have an amazing firefighting. We have all great first responders and public service, um, but the firefighters is definitely second to none. So good event. Me and Mr. DeGorsi were glad to slip out of there pretty early. <laughs> and I got to... Comment, I got to uh, give a compliment to really rock in the business casual. You know, Adam would always show up, you know, dressed to the nines. When, when he showed Jim up. Jim had yeah. the blazer and the, and the jeans, and it worked. It worked because, you know, I've gotten past years. I thought more people were dressed up. We felt a little overdressed, I think, in our, our suits. So I might have to uh, follow the manager's lead next year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Yeah, no, setting a new trend. I think I think he's on to something there. But I also had a, a, a great time at the uh, the firefighters dinner too, and had a chance to talk to uh, Deputy uh, Casey uh, as part of his retirement. It was a nice honor, and nice, nice statements that he made um, that evening as well. Um, so a couple things. Last Friday morning, Mr. Diggins, Mr. Feeney, and I met with the executive director of the MBTA advisory board, Brian Kane, and. 
Um, Mr. Diggins is actually on the executive committee of the uh, advisory board. Um, and we had a good discussion about various issues regarding the MBTA um, from bus service to financial challenges going ahead and, and updating us on various things. And, and um, I think that will be a, a more constant uh, dialogue going forward. There still are efforts apart from that to follow up on our letter to um, General Manager Ng regarding the CSO issue, and we're anticipating a response on that, uh, hopefully shortly in terms of a meeting, and we will keep the board posted on that as well. I um, also want to put it next Monday is Veterans Day, and the, the Veterans Day um, procession parade will start at Walgreens. The, there will be a program within the Central Fire Station on, on Monday, and uh, it's a great day to honor our veterans. And uh, the last thing is um, we are now circulating time for the next long range planning committee meeting, which will take place on November 15th. Um, last year, Mr. Helmuth had served on that with me. Um, Mrs. Mahan had expressed an interest and in talking to, to Mr. Helmuth, Mrs. Mahan is going to uh, join me at that uh, meeting. Thank you to, to, Thank you, to Mr. Mr. Helmuth. Mm -hmm. Um, for that, and so we will get that date and report back to the board after we have that meeting on November. I believe it's going to be on November 15th. So with that, um, and also the last thing, tomorrow being election day, thank all our election workers, thank our town clerk, and uh, we hope we have a, a, a day that uneventful in terms of um, activities at the polls. Um, and Hopefully there's a lot of people, but... Um, a, a big turnout. So, but we thank our all our employees who who are working tomorrow throughout the day. Um, with that, I will take a uh, motion to adjourn. Mr. Diggins, I just want to add one other thing about the, the the meeting with the advisory board. We brought up assessments meeting, and the the executive director is in agreement. You know that that needs to be changed. You know, and so, uh, so that is something that is definitely coming up with the the general manager, but more so the legislature meeting. And so, as they look at the you know, redoing, you know, or or figuring out how to fund in you know, our entire transportation system, I mean, that will be I mean, something that will be for, in the forefront. That's Thank, you, Thank, Thank you, Mr. Diggins, for writing that. Um, okay, so with that, I will take a motion to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Okay, a motion by Mr. Helmuth, seconded by Mr. Hurd. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, and meeting is adjourned. ACMI productions are only made possible with your support. Visit patreon.com slash ACMI to learn how you can help.